so this is the finals of this um, peasant series that we've been doing. Uh, my throat is getting a little bit hoarse because I've just been doing this thing straight through. But hopefully it was okay. And here we're playing against Cloak. Um, for those of you that know, know, I'll try to introduce the cards as they come out because I don't think it'll be as effective if I just list the cards. I'll go ahead and stop on the important cards. This hand is certainly keepable. It has no red mana, so it can't cast Keld Marauders. Um, but yeah, and Tybalk Edict isn't that useful anyway. I go ahead and cast Karen Feeder. It's always a good, good turn one play because it makes Mesmeric Fiend that much better. Um, here I play out the Rakados Guild Mage instead of the other Carrion Feeder. I mean, I think that just makes pretty obvious sense because you're going to do more damage that way. And still don't have my third land. Here I get another Rakados Guild Mage, which isn't too bad. Um, I'm happy to play that out so I can do 5 damage next turn. So the beats are coming pretty fast now. Oh, I think he had to mull. He just says that now. He had to mull down to five, so it's bad for him. Uh, yeah, well, one of the problems with playing three color decks is you have to mull a lot. Um, if you if you're like missing mana in your hand, and they can be quite slow. But sometimes, like, obviously, you also get access to a lot of like strong cards in more colors. Here, I decide not to cycle the Baron more because I want to. Be sure that I can play Nantuka House next turn. And he has no play, so he gets more damage from the beats. Um, yeah, okay. Here's Here we see one of the main cards in this deck. Uh, Bloodbraid Elf. I'll just show you that after the Cascade ends. Um, Bloodbraid Elf is just a, an incredibly strong card in general. It lets you catch, catch up in if you're behind in card advantage because it's a two for one. Sometimes it fizzles, but in this deck, it actually does fizzle. You'll see it in one game that it fizzles, but for the most part, it's quite strong. It hits most. It hits almost every. It hits everything in his deck except for other blood, blood braided elves. And if he doesn't have a creature out, it'll miss on enchantments. So yeah, this is one of the main parts of his deck. Uh, three two haste that can get you another spell. So it's a two for one, and he gets uh, curd ape, which is a two three since he has a forest. He goes ahead and attacks him with Blunder Bay Elf. I wouldn't have attacked him because he's quite far behind in tempo, so that seems like a bad play to me. Um, here I hit a, light, a useless Lightning Bolt, and I can't attack in with anything. Uh, here I'm happy to trade <clears throat> uh, Nantukuhas for Blood Ray, Red Braid Elf, but I'm not happy to trade Nantukuhas plus Karen Feeder for Blood Braid Elf. Because um, if he had attacked in with the Blood Raid Elf and not uh, cast the Quasali Pride Mage. I would have just traded the Karen Feeder for the Blood Raid. But I don't. I think. I guess he's worried about tempo, so he decides not to attack in. And here I have two dead spells because I have no red mana. Here I'm very happy to see the second Swamp because uh, it makes these uh, Rakados Guild Mages quite strong. I attack in with Nantuko because he can't block anything profitably. And I go ahead and don't kill anything during his... I'm worried about... The reason I was thinking about killing something during um, my turn was because of Vines of the Vastwood. But I changed my mind and decide not to. Here he plays another Quasali Pride Mage and gets the cloak onto the uh, Kind Ape. I kill one of the um, Quasali Pride Mages so I take less damage from the Exalted. Uh, so he only gets to exalt it once. And here's the other main card of his deck, Armadillo Cloak. Um, yes, it can sometimes get hit for a 2 for 1. But once it's on a creature, it's very very hard to get it off. Um, and also it gives you lifelink. So it's like, it's basically the same thing as um, Loxodon Warhammer. Except it's not an equipment, and so less good. But it's still quite strong. Because like, if you've played Loxodon Warhammer, you know how strong it is. Alright, so here he um, makes pretty much all my attacks pretty useless, because um, he gets the game back 5 life. Luckily I hit a, an, um, a mountain right here, so I can go ahead and kill the Curdate. I kill it now, I think? 
Oh, I, I got hit and attack with an Antuko house first. But I kill the Curd Ape now just because I'm worried about Finds of the Vast Wood. Um, he's got one card left. And he goes ahead and attacks with Blood Elf, which is the correct play. Because I can just kill it next turn. And since he's so in low in life, I go ahead and attack in with everything. No, just. Okay, that's weird. Um, tra he trades the Quasali Pride Mage for my Carrion Feeder. And I'm just going to kill the Blood Braid Elf at the end of it. Oh, I decide not to because, again, I'm worried about Vines of the Vastwood. He plays a Curd Ape, which I can't really deal with. Uh, I attack in with both of these. Um, with the idea that I'll use. Um, Rakados Guild Mage's ability to make this a zero one, one so I trade it, basically trade the Curd Ape for a, uh, what is it called, a uh, mountain. Uh, but I tap wrong and should have left a Swamp up, so I could have cycled the Baron more. Uh, but I figure I'm just going to go ahead and use Rakados Guild Mage ability on, and not cycle the Baron more. So here I attack him with both, with the intention of, um, Using uh, <clears throat> throwing using Baron Moore to give this a minus two minus two if he blocks anything. Here he plays uh, Wild Nacatl. I cycle, hoping for an answer for Wild Nacatl, and I use the Goblins and with the intent to take less damage so I can't get killed by the Lightning Bolt. That's why I block like that. Block like that instead of just sacking it. Because what's well, going to do trample. So like there's no reason to do it like that. I mean like. Usually you can um, block and then sack. And then not take any damage. But this has trample. So that's not going to work. So again staying out of lightning bolt range. And I get a Keldon Marauder. So he can attack in profitably this turn. And uh, I can actually cast Skeletal Scry. I know I'm not going to block with either Skelt, uh, Carrying Feeder, or Rakdos Guild Mage. Um, and here I do this wrong. I should have summoned up a token. So he would have traded with the token and the Kelden Marauder um, instead of the Kelden Marauder and the Nantukas. So that was a mistake on my part. And I think I just realized that here. And um, since I have no better plays, I just. Um, create a token to power up this carrying feeder at the end of my turn or in the end of his turn um yeah I say good cause like that sucks that I misplayed like that he he brings me down to one here and he has no cards in hand um so I just sack this so I can do more damage more quickly uh here I don't attack in with the token I think for a couple minutes but I decide not to because if he gets Blood Braid Elf, I just lose, so. So I'm doing that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm at one, and then he draws the uh, Silhana uh, Ledge ledge Walker, which is bad news, because if I don't kill him next turn, I lose. Um, and I get I do the same thing that I did last turn and power up the Carrion Feeder, making it a 4-4. Four, four. So basically, he has to block one of my guys, now, so I go ahead and make him a f uh, five, 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 and attack him with both. So he has to block one of my guys, or else he dies. Um, here at this point, he can win with um, lightning bolt or blood braid valve into like like blood lightning bolt or something. But yeah, he doesn't top deck it, so I win there.